Um, should we move into NASCAR? Sure. So a uh, couple very interesting things happened this past weekend for the Daytona race. Mm -hmm. So number one, um, Corey LaJoy in the previous race at Michigan had his car flip over when it got sideways. A contact on the, with the right front fender, car turned sideways and just flipped in the air. That is, quite honestly, that's just not acceptable. There's no way that a car, when it turns like that, should get up in the air that easily. There has been millions of dollars and hours and hours of time spent to prevent that from happening. That's gonna catch everybody. And NASCAR has worked really hard at engineering with the roof flaps and the uh, hood flaps and whatnot, ways to keep the car from getting into the air. Mm -hmm. And so it was a little bit of a surprise because we haven't seen a car go over in a long time. And, and so for Daytona, they brought out additional uh, rear window fins. Uh, there was always one on one side. They brought out another one on the other side. And the thoughts were that that would keep the cars on the ground. Well, about midway through the race, mm -hmm. Michael McDonald's car got sideways and started to go up in the air. And I really think that the, the announcers on the broadcast wrongly thought that the flaps kept it from going in the air. But if you look closely, Joey's Logano's car went into and the hood went into the window opening of Michael McDonald's car, basically catching it and holding it from gaining in the air until the car slowed down enough and then the car just dropped out. Mm -hmm. But if you look at Joe, uh, Joey Logano's hood and whatnot, it caught Michael McDonald's car and kept it from rolling over the top of Joey Logano's car. Right there, it's still contact. And then, oh. look at this. Whoa. And so they're thinking, hey, well, the, the new features seem to work. Well, we learned a little bit la later mm -hmm. when um, Barry's car, Josh Barry, Josh Barry's car got sideways, flipped over and ended up on the roof. And quite frankly, a terrifying yeah. slide into, into, the into the wall nose first. and stayed upside down, mm -hmm. which of course, with all the equipment that they now have to protect the head and neck and shoulders, it's hard to get out of that car upside down. Yeah. In addition to the fact that you're basically hanging upside down on the belts. Right. You know, that <laughs> your leverage points are all gone. So they had to go out there, verify that he was okay, and then slowly roll the car over so that he could get out of the car. He wasn't hurt, but still it was, a fairly scary ride. Yeah. So that was the first bit of it that that NASCAR's engineering um, it, it still hasn't solved why these cars are starting to go over. Yeah. Somebody else pointed out that the two cars that have gone over are the Ford Mustangs, and mm. that there was a I think it was a Chevy that was spinning with Josh Berry's car at the time, and it didn't. I mean, they're, they're side by side in the same spin. Josh's went over, his didn't. Wrong, sir. Wrong. Interesting. And so uh, they don't know if maybe it's a, uh, the design of the Ford Mustang has more lift, that wing effect uh, when the car gets sideways than the Toyotas and the Chevys do. So mm -hmm. I'm sure that they're in the wind tunnel NASCAR is right now trying to see what that is and whether or not the Fords need to just have an adjustment. They'll probably do the adjustment for all three models because they want them to be as similar as possible. Right. But I'm sure that they're looking at that. Interesting. Yeah. So that was number one. Yes. N number two, and we've talked about the win and you're in policy before. Mm -hmm. We had an upset winner. What, what, Not just a little upset winner. We, we had the, <laughs> the last place 
team car of those that run every race yes win the race that's harrison Bur burton and the wood brothers mm -hmm. so the last place car just got a two million dollar bonus I'm in the money. as we talked about before the difference between being in the playoffs and not being in the playoffs is about two million dollars minimum in prize money um, in addition, that was Wood Brothers' 100th victory. Mm -hmm. They're one of the oldest teams in NASCAR, and for many, many years, uh, David Pearson was their star driver, but they didn't run every race back in the early days. And so, but it's been a long time since their 99th win, and so I think it was 2012 with Trevor Bain at Daytona wow. that they last won a race, and so uh, they have 100. The other interesting thing is Harrison Burton has been fired. Yes, I from the team as of the end of the season. So basically, the ALM know that, that they weren't going to renew his contract. Jeez. And so, you know, it, it, he was racing his tail off. As he said, he'd win every, every race. And so the question is, will that help him land a ride for next year? Probably not in Cup. I'm guessing if he's going to be anywhere, it'd be probably Xfinity or, or the Truck Series. Um, anyway, so that <laughs> that uh, then raised the question of well, there used to be a rule that you had to be in the top 30 in points and get a win to get the win and in, and they eliminated that. And I'm not 100% sure, but I think that was when the charters came into effect. That was one of the things that was negotiated. If we're one of the 36 teams with a charter and we win, we should get that playoff berth. Well, that, has, that whole question has reemerged, and oddly enough, they're renegotiating charters right now, so <laughs> I don't know if that oh, will go into the negotiations or not, but that's, it was a wild Daytona race. Uh, this weekend is one of my favorite tracks to watch races at because it's such a darn hard track to run, and that's Darlington. Darlington. yep. And they, they call her the Lady in Black, and, um, you know, just Track about, too tough to tame. Tough too, too tough to tame. Uh, you're going to get your Darlington stripe at some point in time, which means you're going to bump up against the wall and, you know, scratch the paint off the side of your yeah. car because if you're not racing hard, you're not into the wall at least once at Darlington. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, if you are racing hard, you're not. In, yeah, you know what I meant. <laughs> English as a foreign language is English. Got there eventually. <laughs> Not really, but if you can say, tell them what I meant to say, then then that might be helpful. Anyway, if you're racing hard, you're going to end up in the wall at some point in time. Yeah. Uh, and that's just Darlington. Uh, yeah. Two very different corners, egg-shaped track for those uh, that aren't familiar, uh, because the farmer next door went and sold the little piece of tra uh, property that they needed to make that second set of corners the same width as the other set of corners because that's where his fishing pond was <laughs> and he was not going to give up his fishing pond so Darlington ended up being egg-shaped that's funny and it's also in the sand hills area so the track just consistently has sand blown onto it which is incredibly abrasive to the tires so tire management one of the reasons why I like this track. Mm -hmm. I don't care how bulletproof the tires are, the tires are gonna wear at Darlington because of the sand that con consistently gets blown onto the track there. So, mm. yeah. Uh, so that's one of the, uh, we skipped ahead. <laughs> uh, that's one of the things I'm looking forward to is, is the Darlington, Darlington race this weekend because it's, it's always uh, fun. And you, it, it always seems like this is the same set of veterans that rise to the top there. Yeah, it might be Kyle Busch's last chance to get into the playoffs. It's a track that he does well at. Yeah. Especially now that Kevin Harvick is retired. That was another driver that always did well there. Hmm. Yeah. My uh, other NASCAR note is that they announced that they're going to Mexico in 2025 mm -hmm. and doing a race uh, in Mexico City. Yes. On the same track, I believe, that F1 goes to. Yes. Yeah, uh, with, uh, they talked about some minor um, configuration changes. Mm -hmm. They might put in a, an additional chicane. Um, they really don't want those cars going full bore for too long of a period of time. A couple in issues, blown engines become an issue. And then if there's any kind of brake failure, it's hard enough to slow these cars down. They don't have Formula One brakes. Right. And if, if you have any kind of brake problem, 
um, that's going to be a big hit for the car and the driver. Mm -hmm. So they're going to probably put in uh, at least one chicane and they might shorten other parts of the track as well. So um, that's pretty exciting. Yeah, that'll be cool. One of the challenges, I'm pretty sure this track is at pretty high elevation. Yes, and, you're correct. And so this would have been more of an issue back when we had carburetors, but tuning a car at elevation, a big V8 engine like that is always a challenge compared to doing it at sea level. They'll figure it out. They're smart people. Yeah. Yeah, having enough oxygen going to those big V8 engines. Kind of an important thing. Kind of an important thing. So then you got to lean out the fuel so that you have the right fuel oxygen mixture. And then sometimes when you lean out the fuel, it's easier to burn a piston. And so might see more engine failures than we've been seeing in NASCAR in recent years. We haven't had that so much in the recent iterations of the car. Yes, they've really learned how to make those engines bulletproof mm -hmm. uh, for the most part. I mean, you still occasionally see them, but not very often. It used to be yeah. two or three a weekend yeah. uh, back in the day, but now it's just, you know, the, the reliability is so important. So yeah. they're, they're leaning that way.